I welcome you all in this lecture on uh, examples of models uh, which is uh, a uh, subtopic uh, for the course modeling and simulation of dynamic systems. Now, uh, before we talk about model, let us see what is uh, the definition of a model. Okay? Uh, now, uh, as we all know uh, to study the dynamics of any real system, the idea of the system, idea of model of the system is very important. Uh, as I have given in my first lecture, uh, say modeling of a water tank by say spring mass damper system or say modeling of a car, uh, uh, again uh, by uh, say uh, spring mass damper system. Now, these models uh, are models are simplified abstracted constructs and which can be used to predict the system behavior. So, the model which are created, uh, the models of the system which are created, these are simplified abstracted construct and with the help of these models, we can predict the system uh, behavior. Shannon defines the models as a representation of an object, a system or an idea in some form other than the entity itself. Now, the quantity, the quality or usefulness of the model is measured by its ability to capture the governing physical features of the problem. Now, the model uh, uh, which we are creating, uh, it could be a best model or a worst model. What do I mean by best or worst model? At a worst model, it could be a concise description of say the body of data or at the best model, uh, it captures the essential physics of the problem. It illumin uh, illuminates the principle that underline the key observations and it predicts the behavior under conditions which have not been studied. A scaled physical model are well known uh, to engineers okay? and uh, there are many examples of scaled physical models. For example, uh, a wind tunnel model of an aircraft okay? and uh, say uh, structural models uh, used in civil engineering, uh, plastic models of metal parts which are used in the photoelastic experiments uh, in order to uh, determine the isochromatic fringe orders uh, or the principal stresses difference okay? and of course, with uh, addition of certain other uh, supplementary method, one can separate the principal stresses as well. So, that uh, is there, uh, that is done uh, with the help of uh, photoelastic models. The principal features of these models is that only some of the features of the real model are reflected in them. Okay? Uh, we do not try to incorporate all the features of the physical system into the real model as uh, it may results in complicating the model itself and which will be of course, difficult to analyze at later stages. Another type of models is what is called as the mathematical model, uh, which is more abstract than the physical model. Uh, of course, there is a very strong similarity uh, between the physical model and the mathematical model and these mathematical model also predicts. Uh, certain aspect of the system, uh, system response when it is subjected to uh, a, uh, an input. Now, for example, uh, 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 for an aircraft, a mathematical model may predict how an aircraft will respond to the pilot input command signals. So, uh, uh, by uh, seeing the broad examples of the model type as the physical and mathematical models, let us see a, a little elaborate classifications of the various model types. 
So, as I said models can be classified as the physical model and mathematical model. This physical model again could be classified as static model and dynamic model. Similarly, the mathematical models can be classified as static model and dynamic model. These static model uh, can further be classified as numerical model and analytical model. Likewise, the dynamic model can be classified as analytical model and numerical model and of course, from numerical model one can go for the system simulation. So, this is the uh, classification of uh, types of models. Uh, we will be going through each uh, one, uh, each example one by one. Now, the physical model as the name indicates physical models means something which is going to be a real which has got a physics. Okay. So, these are based on some analogy between such systems as mechanical and electrical or electrical and hydraulic system. So, these physical models are based on certain analogy uh, between uh, these type of systems. In physical model of a system, system attributes are represented by measurements such as say voltage or uh, say position of the shaft. The system activities are reflected through physical laws through which models has been derived. Now, let us uh, see the mathematical model. These type of model mathematical models use physical symbolic notations and mathematical equations to represent the systems. Okay. So, uh, uh, the expressions could be either symbolic in nature or it could be the mathematical equations uh, which are used to represent the system. Now, attributes are represented by variables and the activities are represented by the mathematical functions that interrelates the variables. So, this is uh, what uh, do we mean by the mathematical model. Now, uh, these models could further be classified as a static model and dynamic model. So, uh, the physical model say uh, or mathematical model can be classified as static and dynamic model. So, the static uh, versus dynamic model, what are the static models basically? Now, static models represent the system at a particular point in time when the system is in balance or the system is in state of equilibrium. So, this is what is called the static model. The dynamic model represents system as they change over time and of course, that uh, change uh, occurs because of certain activity uh, which are there in the system. So, these are the dynamic models. Now, model, models uh, could be further be uh, classified as numerical model versus analytical model. Numerical models, they apply computational procedures to solve the equations. For example, the solution may be derived in the form of a complicated integral expression, uh, which then needs to be expanded say uh, in the form of a power series for evaluation purpose. So, this is about the numerical model. The analytical model, uh, 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 it finds the model that can be solved uh, and best fit the system being studied. Okay. So, this is how we can work with the analytical model. For example, the linear differential equations okay. and the system simulations uh, basically it, uh, it is considered to be a numerical computation technique used in conjunction with the dynamic mathematical model. So, these are uh, uh, the brief descriptions of the various types of model. Now, let us see a little detail about these types. First, we will take up the static physical model. Okay. The static physical model. 
Now, these static physical models are basically the scale down model of the real system. Okay. So, whether we talk about uh, a, uh, an architect uh, uh, preparing a model of a building. Okay. Or uh, it could be a, a small model of the aircraft which is to be tested uh, in uh, say a, 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 a wind tunnel or it could be a scaled model of a ship which is to be tested in a tank. So, uh, there could be uh, as I said various uh, uh, example for this an architect uh, as I said before constructing a building makes a scale down model of the building which of course reflects all the features of uh, its room outer design and all other features. Likewise, scale models are used in wind tunnels and water tank during design of aircraft and ships. So, these are basically a scaled down model of a system which does not change with time. So, these are the static physical model. Next are the dynamic physical model. The dynamic physical models are the ones which change with time or which are function of time. So, these dynamic models for example, if we uh, talk about a, uh, a small aircraft model in the wind tunnel, if I am going to uh, blow the wind with different velocities. Now, uh, here we can say that the wind velocity changes with the time. Okay. So, the, uh, 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 so this type of uh, model is what is called the dynamic physical model. Now, these dynamic physical models are uh, very much helpful uh, in uh, system analysis. For example, for example, uh, suppose, uh, uh, suppose um, I want to prepare uh, the dynamic model of a car. Okay? Now, I can prepare, I can model the car as a lumped mass and I can model the suspension of the car as a spring damper system. Now, in preparing this, uh, in preparing these models, dynamic physical models, the thing is that uh, these type of models are always based on certain analogies. Okay. These analogies could be between the electrical and mechanical system say. For example, the same this uh, car model which I am talking to you, I can model this, uh, I can uh, get the similar behavior with uh, an electrical model which consists of a voltage source, a resistor, an inductor and a capacitor. So, a spring mass damper system is analogous to a uh, uh, LCR circuit which we call it LCR circuit in series. Okay. Now, uh, here uh, you see uh, the governing equation or the uh, equation for this spring mass damper system could be given by m d square x by d t square plus r d x by d t plus k x is equal to f t. Uh, he, here m is the mass say uh, x is the displacement of the mass, r is the damping, uh, k is the stiffness and f t of course is the force. Uh, 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 which is being applied say on the mass. Now, if I take an electrical analog of it, the voltage corresponds to the force, okay? resistor corresponds to the damper and inductor corresponds to, uh, to the mass and capacitor corresponds to the stiffness. Okay? And if I look at the system equation for the electrical system, uh, we will get L d square q by d t square plus R d q by d t plus q by c is equal to E t. Here uh, you can see that L is analogous to m, q is analogous to x, R is analogous to R and 1 by c is analogous to k and f is analogous to 
E. In this expression, uh, uh, Q represents the charge. Now, the uh, uh, greatest advantage of this physical analogy between the mechanical and electrical system is that the mechanical system which is a very huge say if I want to model a car and if I want to see the say the effect of stiffness of suspension system of the car on the say displacement of the mass actually doing this activity with a mechanical system is very tedious and uh, difficult also. But the same uh, uh, activity or the similar corresponding analogous activity I can perform here okay, by uh, uh, say uh, seeing the effect of C on the charge. Okay. So, this is the uh, advantage of this uh, analogy. So, in practice as I said it is easier to modify the electrical system than the mechanical system okay? and so electrical analog of mechanical system can be prepared and studied easily. Uh, as I said if a car will bounce suppose uh, we take up an example that if a car will bounce too much with a specific suspension system the electrical model will demonstrate this by showing that charge on the condenser oscillates heavily. Okay? So, this is what we call it as the uh, dynamic physical model. Next let us see the static model. So, first the static mathematical model. A static model gives the relationship between the system attributes when the system is in equilibrium. Examples uh, uh, here uh, say we can take a case of static mathematical model from industry. Uh, uh, generally there should be a balance between the supply of uh, uh, supply and demand of any product in the market. Supply increases if the price is higher, but on the other hand demand decreases with the increase in price. Okay? So, these are the two uh, uh, factors. Now, suppose if I want to model this thing, uh, 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 I can do that with the aim to find the optimum price with which demands can match the supply. Now, if we denote price by P say supply by S and demand by Q and assuming that price equation to be linear, we have these equations Q is A minus BP. S is equal to C plus DP and S is equal to Q, where here A, B, C, D are the parameters. Okay? And for a specific value of these parameters, we can find out the equilibrium market price. Okay? Uh, of course, this we can get with the help of these uh, two equations. So, the relationship between demand denoted by Q and price denoted by P are represented here by a straight line mark demand uh, in the next figure which is there on the slide. Similarly, the supply denoted by S is plotted against price and the relationship is a straight line marked as supply. Supply equals price where the uh, uh, supply equals price where the two lines cross. Now, these things uh, more usually the demand and supply are depicted by the curves. The previous one which we saw here they are represented by the straight lines, but uh, these demand and supply are depicted by the curves which slope downward and upward respectively. It may not be possible to express the relationship by equation that can be solved easily. So, for this case if you are going to represent the supply and demand by curve, we need some uh, numerical or graphical method to get a solution. Next models are the dynamic mathematical model. These dynamic mathematical model models allow the change of system attributes okay, uh, to be derived as a function of time. Okay. So, this plot which I am showing you, it shows how x varies in response to a steady force applied say at t is equal to 0 for various damping 
uh, ratios here. So, for various damping ratios, how the x that is the displacement of the mass varies with time that has been uh, represented and this shows, this plot shows for the simple spring mass damper system which uh, I have uh, discussed earlier in this lecture. Now, uh, since these models are simplification of reality, a very careful considerations need to be given in creating a model. If a model is very detailed and complex, so as I told you that it becomes very difficult to identify the system parameters and to analyze the model. Okay? And if your model is very simple, then it may happen that your model may not capture the some of the important properties or, or important features of the system. So, while preparing a model of the system, we need to, uh, we need to have the uh, clear cut idea of what behavior we want to study, what are the factors which are going to affect the behavior of the system and to ensure that we do not leave anything unnecessarily and uh, other way we do not include anything uh, uh, otherwise. Okay? Inclusion may not harm, if you include some unnecessarily thing, it may not harm your model, but the thing is that it may take your computation time which is unwarranted. Now, uh, what are the principles which are used in modeling? Let us see. So, for building up of the models, these are the some of the principles which are usually considered. Say block building, relevance, accuracy and aggregation. So, let us see these uh, one by one. First, the block building. The system should be organized in a series of block. In this block building, uh, 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 preparing of the system uh, model through block building, we uh, organize the system into a series of blocks to simplify the interactions within the system. For example, if I want uh, to uh, prepare a model of a factory okay, uh, where uh, I can uh, 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 treat each department as a separate block with certain input and output uh, okay, uh, being the work pass from the, uh, the department to department. So, this is how we can do the modeling using the block diagram method. Okay. So, for example, uh, if you have a production control department here and there are certain customer orders coming, then uh, 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 and from here. Uh, 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 raw material is coming. So, this con orders can be uh, customer order uh, can be uh, communicated to uh, uh, these uh, departments and raw materials is comes to the purchase department. Then it goes to the fabrication department. After fabrication, it goes for the assembly and after assembly, it goes for the shipping and of course, in terms uh, what we get is the finished good. So, this is what we call it as the block diagram approach for the system modeling. Next is the aggregation. Okay? So, in aggregation, uh, aggregation to be considered uh, uh, is the, the extent to which number of individual entities can be grouped together in order into a larger entities. For example, the production manager will want to consider the shops of each uh, department as individual entities and of course, they can group into a larger entities. Next is the relevance. The model should only include those aspect of the system that are relevant to the study objective. I have been emphasizing on this fact again and again. While irrelevant information may do not do any harm, 
it should be excluded because it increases the complexity and the need doing more work to do to solve it. Okay. So, that is uh, 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 while modeling uh, we have to consider this factor uh, into consideration that is the relevance that is what to consider and what not to consider. For example, uh, uh, if the factory system aims to compare the effect of different operating rules on efficiency, it should not to do consider the hiring of the employees. So, hiring of the employees may not be related with it. Next uh, important factor is accuracy. The accuracy of the information for the model should be considered. Okay. For example, uh, uh, in the aircraft system, the accuracy with the movement of the aircraft depends on the representation of the airframe. Okay. So, uh, if the airframe say is regarded as a rigid body, then it is necessary to recognize the flexibility of the airframe. Okay. And uh, for an engineer responsible for estimating the fuel consumption, these assumptions of rigid body may be simple, satisfied or simple representation we can say. But if uh, another engineer is interested in knowing the vibrations or the comfort of the passengers, then he cannot assume the airframe to be a rigid body. He has to consider the airframe as a flexible body. So, uh, here uh, for comfort of the passenger, vibration uh, 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 and uh, description of the airframe, here it need to be considered as a flexible body. Okay? Now, uh, at the last here, what could be the systems viewpoint to the modeling. Okay? So, after seeing the various types of models uh, which uh, could be made for a system, what could be the systems viewpoint for the modeling. Okay? Now, the system viewpoint for the modeling, uh, there are basically uh, two very basic assumptions which uh, we need to consider always and these assumptions are that the, a system is an entity that is separable from the surroundings or the environment of the system by means of say physical or conceptual boundaries. So, we uh, isolate the system from the surrounding or uh, it is possible to isolate the system from the surrounding. For example, an air traffic control system environment is physical boundary as well as the fluctuating demands that could also be the environment for the physical system. And the second assumption here could be that the system is composed of interacting parts. Okay? For example, air traffic control system is composed of pupil and machine with communication between them. Okay. So, these are the two basic assumptions uh, for the system viewpoint of the modeling. The first one is that we are able to, the sep able to separate the system from the surrounding so that we can uh, uh, focus on the system, okay. we can understand the system and the system is composed of the interacting parts okay. and these interacting parts can have uh, energy interaction or other interaction between them. Okay. So, with this I will close uh, this lecture and next lecture we will see the modeling of the dynamic system. Thank you.